Hey, what's up, street gods? This is Eric from Eric from the Street Photography Blog. So, and I'm Cindy. <laughs> so, Cindy, give us a give us a lowdown of Street Club. Of Street Club. Um, well, first off, we are reporting live from Kyoto Haptic Office at uh, one a.m. <laughs> on Monday, I guess now. Um, it's the last day before our sisters have to go back to the states, but. We've just been doing so many different exciting activities, activities, work, art, projects, and as part of con- part of that, we also are concluding the last week of Street Club. I can't believe it's been about a month and a half already. Yeah, I don't want st- I don't want Street Club and summer school to end. But summer's over, but fall's beginning, and we are just so impressed and honored that so many people have ta- dedicated their time that to share their comments their photos provide such constructive feedback and develop and build such a vibrant and supportive community um we'll talk about this later too but we really really hope that you continue to use this forum make it your space continue to share posts leave feedback and critique um and we hope street club could still continue on in a new shape and form as we continue on. And also thank you for Cindy for starting Street Club. <laughs> so let's jump into the entries. Uh, this week's assignment is layers. And layers is actually one of the hardest things to do in photography and street photography. So great comments and feedbacks, everybody. So to start with Steve. So looking at this shot, Steve, I think what makes the shot is that you got this little boy looking back. I like the pop of color of the blue here, the blue here. And, you know, it's kind of open-ended, it tells a story, you know, there's a nice movement between the arm, the story of the kids here, a uh, kid looking back here. I think I like, what I like is his uh, his hopeful look and his happy demeanor. What could have made this even stronger is one of the other kids in the background were looking back at you. So I think it's a pretty strong shot and, you know, you could see the urban environment in the background. And I think as a social documentary type of work, it's actually very important. All right, so Cindy, your take on this shot? So this shot, what I love about it is your eyes really just go around the frame. Um, these two figures here on the side kind of create this curtain-like shape and like a nice smooth curve. There's just a lot of, like my eyes have a lot to look at in this frame, which I love. And there's an interesting like contrast between like the kind of the darker figures here and the brightness of this of the background and then to this central figure at first it might feel like there's just like too much going on but i think because just because the composition is so strong my eyes kind of neatly like everything that needs to be in the frame is in the frame there's nothing that is actually distracting for me the cherry on top is actually the parsnips of this person here um and also pretty much everyone has their profile of their face so that has and glasses so there's a lot connecting these images. You can even kind of see this, this circle-like shapes that are almost like glasses here. Yeah, and also the, the gesture of his finger. It almost looks like the hand of God mm-hmm. in that one Renaissance painting. And one thing I was actually really impressed by, Steve, this awesome overlay. I like the, the yellow color to really show the strong triangle composition and the fact that you have the subject in the far left being like the bookend on the far left and the far right. So yeah, fantastic uh, visual overlay and critique, Steve. Last, last thing about this image that I love, all the hands are actually included perfectly. So even the, the figure in the, the background, fully having their hands here, here, and then obviously the, the main gesture here. Very good job. So see that? So what I like is, I actually like it how you put the focus in the background. You have these two white ladies, and I think, uh, I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. looks like a midday prayer, perhaps, or I don't know. But I like how there's a juxtaposition between, you know, the the traditional and uh, the Western and the foreigner here. And so obviously the depth works well. I like the, the red here, the green here, and just how out of place these two women here are. What I think could have made this shot stronger is, as a viewer, I don't really exactly know what's going on, which frustrates me as a viewer, is that I want to see a little more context or 
I'm not exactly sure what would allow me to better understand what is going on in the scene, but just one thing to consider is you're there and you're probably more culturally aware of what's going on than I am, but a lot of people who aren't so culturally aware might not know what's going on. So snap mode? So critiques and do. Um, so for me, I like the, the, the depth of this image and like kind of taking you through the scene this way. Um, and kind of the hands kind of creeping into this, to the edge of this, the, the scene and kind of pulling back this, the tarp here. And then this, the blue here kind of nicely balances with the blue of this figure. I mean, he is a central figure here, but for me, my eyes naturally kind of just go down the alley a little bit. So I wonder if taking a step over towards your right and maybe like reframing it that way would have a cleaner background. But then I do like the context of like maybe this person works in like a fencing or metalwork business. So there's a little bit more context there. What could also perhaps work in the, the future is when you're shooting, take a few steps to the right and shoot more head on. and. Instead of including this, just include more of this wall to take up the frame. Also, maybe show a little more of his hand here on the left side of the frame. Maybe incorporate more of the animals. Because I do like this idea of like man versus caged animals. I like this soft blue against mm -hmm. kind of this earth stone, terracotta, red, orange color here. And also the blue here. So one, one thing for you to consider for in the future is work the scene a little bit from different angles. All right, so Tom, I like, you know, you have these two guys here looking pretty bored and you got the depth, you can look outside. I just feel that it's lacking a little bit of soul, like, I can maybe get the sense that it's kind of a crappy job, but at the same time, I want to see something a little bit more deeper. So whether you had something in the foreground, looking back at you, having these guys hunched over looking a little more depressed. I want to see a little more emotion in Wait, the shot. Wait, can I add to this? I actually kind of weirdly like this shot. Yeah. Even if there isn't like a deep emotion connection with it, but it feels like this, it feels surreal. Um, mm. So the perspective here, your first, just, I mean, mm. I guess you're in a, like a, a monorail or a metro, so, but it still feels like this view perspective is still quite novel. You feel like you're in a spaceship kind of looking yeah, down into the sky. Yeah, it does have that like spaceship feel. Right, and like the cars look quite tiny and small and kind of surreal. The buildings look cold and so you, and you kind of feel like a, like you have these binoculars you're viewing out. So for me, it's like, I, I kind of like it just because it's kind of weird, but there isn't like that this, there is like something missing in terms of some human connection, like either a gesture, a hand gesture, I mean, you, yeah, a hand gesture or a profile of face. Mm. And also just kind of to show how weird Dubai is. <laughs> right. So, uh, Jakub, I love all the blur of the motions. I think, you know, I do see some depth. Obviously, you got people in the foreground, things in the background. But I feel like this perhaps doesn't fit the topic of depth as well. And here, I like the movement of the people, but perhaps it's not powerful enough. And unfortunately, the, the people who are not moving this lady here and the, the tour guide, they're just not that interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Either shoot a, a longer exposure to make everyone just totally look like ghosts or just keep clicking it. Because I think the hard thing with shots like this is obviously you're not sure what you're going to get until you keep clicking. But I'd like to see one central happening that's a little bit more interesting. A nice little recommendation, um, snap mode in this show. I think this is a uh, Regurai. I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, uh, Cyprian. So, Cindy, your critique? Oh, you got the guy. Yeah, here. actually, you that's a weird. Here. I like that a lot. This person napping. Um, so, what I like about this shot, it, it reminds me of what um, Eric's been talking about in terms of death, not just depth or layers not just for the sake of layers but having actually having some emotional layering or emotional depth of which there's some story or emotion of so you I mean there's like a mother figure who's talking to her children and then possibly a father or it could be a stranger but you can kind of weave together this narrative and there's this natural frame here as well as a tree here in the in the bench um 
I I like the moment quite a lot. Um, I think if it would be interesting to see how you work the scene or if you work the scene to maybe take a few steps to the left so it would be a little bit more head on then you can kind of maybe see this other figure but I also like the person between this frame too I don't know maybe I think most of the right side is a little bit unnecessary yeah I think um, another idea is just getting closer and just framing it so just including yeah the getting rid of yeah. the right side little details that I like too is the feet the shoes mm. so even like taking a really low shot and like seeing the feet and then or comparing i don't know so i like i like the story and the and the emotion it conveys mm. all right ltv so the good thing i like about the shot is it's one of the shots when you first look at it and you're like what the fuck am i looking at and so it's always good to have that wtf in terms of framing i really wish you would have just framed this tighter just shoot um a horizontal mm -hmm. shot to just get this because unfortunately the backpack kind of distracts and it it removes from the surrealistic aspect of you know perhaps these two students and this guy in the center looking at this uh you know some sort of mural and it kind of does blend reality and surreality uh, even one thing that could have and i love this guy in the center it's the chair on top once again if you just kept clicking and working the scene if one of them or both of them turned around at you they'd make the shot mm -hmm. even stronger mm -hmm. all right new law t hmm so oh, new, yeah. your thoughts that's pretty interesting yeah my thoughts um interesting i love i mean the first uh thought that comes to mind is like the mirroring of these profiles with the statues so kind of like a what's real what's not comparison which is really nice and then you have this nice umbrella which kind of frames the image um i think compositionally this works really well and it's kind of a interesting um kind of this interesting tension between like human and statue um hmm. this is a tricky thing i think vertical shots are really hard First of all, like, so this one works really well, actually, I think, as a vertical shot. So because everything that's in it, it's like often vertical shots for me feel quite tight. Mm. But I think here it actually feels like clean. Um, so that's just my perspective on the, my first gut understanding of this image. Yeah. What do you think, Aaron? Yeah, no, it's immediately seeing these profiles of the faces, that spacing between the nose and the... Mm here and also the white face against the black and then the face here yeah so that's absolutely fascinating to me the hard thing is the stuff on the top of the frame i mean you do have this nice curve here but unfortunately just because the light is just really kind of blown mm -hmm. out around the edges but i think the framing is actually very good in terms of uh, shooting it uh, vertically and in terms of depth layers and this profiles of the picture it looks really good the lighting is not that great but i think the composition is excellent Nice critique, Cindy. Mm -hmm. All right, Robert. So great light, you know, this this nice little flare, this hand gesture here. It looks like you're just a bit tall, so you're kind of tall shooting down, so it makes people look a little awkwardly small. Mm -hmm. So what I might just do next time is just crouch down a little bit lower and either shoot a vertical or just show less buildings because I, I kind of want to see more of the street action. But it is kind of nice. It's like a nice moment in time. Uh, I, I really feel the energy of the bigger and the light is just what makes mm -hmm. the shot. All right, Vicky. Cindy, your thoughts? Oh, wow. Um, well, wow, another vertical shot. So I love the juxtaposition between the ad, the woman in the ad giving me a, like the direct facial um, head on. Uh, what am I saying? Head on view. <laughs> what am I saying? It's getting late. Head on view. And then, like, this kind of like slightly downtrodden comparison of this woman looking down here. So, I can, there's like a great story that comes from here. Um, and then the fact that it's shot like through this reflection kind of gives it an eerie, dreamy feel, mm. especially with the trees here. I think it. It's quite a beautiful shot with the colors. You have green, blues, and pinks. Um, 
Mm. Is this like really skinny? This shot. Yeah, it looks like she cropped a little bit a off the. A little bit. Um, the sides. So I feel like it's just missing a little bit, just because it feels like a little bit skinny. Just. Um, so. And the other thing is, I I like that you actually caught some background. Um, figures here with their leg open here so that's a nice cherry on top too and this but i think this the text kind of distracts mm. i mean it's sephora it's a powerful brand and you can kind of weave a narrative around like makeup and beauty or something like that but i kind of i i immediately look at the eyes here and then I look at this like just kind of up above here just because the reflection yeah. is quite beautiful and then i'm like Go, taking my eyes down here to this arm distracted by the words a little bit and then I see her face. Maybe if the the woman on the bottom was looking at you as well. Right. Or maybe if like her head was like closer to where the hand Oh, uh, good idea. So there's like more movement between the frame because I feel like it's just... I, I think the, the crop makes it feel like there's something missing a little bit or mm. um, there's a, a lack of like connection with this, this subject here. Mm. Excellent critique, Cindy. Right, then all. Great, great, great curve here. I really love this shot. Is there's good separation. Mm. I love the cool tones. The way you process the photo, it just, I could feel the coldness of it, and I like all the white hairs. Mm -hmm. Once again, the cut off eyes here, and I could really see the spiral here. My only critique would be, you know, it's a nice moment of them all by the sea, but nothing's technically really going on. So if you waited and shot more when they're having hand gestures and they're communicating, I think it would have made it a little bit stronger. But I, I do love the tone and the, the textures. It looks really nice. Nice uh, reference, Alada. Uh, these are very good reference photos. Great references. You guys are awesome. All right. Uh, Zach, is there a critic, Cindy? You want to take this one? Yeah. I got all the vertical ones. So... I like the diagonal here, the diagonals here, and then you got the layers of this guy here and the silhouette, the ad here, this lady here. Unfortunately, there's too many overlaps with this guy and this people here. And maybe just a little bit too far away. And also you're shooting with a wide angle lens, which makes it a bit tricky. Uh, I would have just taken a step closer and just maybe crotch down a bit more. Or just to simplify the scene and just shoot a horizontal, just capturing this. I mean, I know his walker does make a strong... Uh, diagonal which is interesting but I think there's a little bit too much look in the frame I would like to see it simplified a bit yeah nice suggestion with the crop Jeff mm -hmm. yeah so you can see immediately this shot oh, is yeah, that's strong. stronger and then you could see more of these figures here so generally when it comes to shooting layers it's so hard because mm -hmm. you want to add layers in depth to add more interesting elements and subjects yet you want to still keep it simple all right Alan so um, let's, let's see. Pick one to let's just uh, let's let's pick this one. Yeah. I kind of like this one. So critique, Cindy. Oh, wow. So I think that he, Alan said this was scanned. Pushed, okay. yeah. Push film. Okay, and then I see. I still like the green. I but. I like the green. I mean, just because like nowadays everything's so digital and clean, so yeah. push film kind of adds this historical character. Um, hand gesture, great hand gesture here of this arm looking up and anyway, you kind of like you follow the main subject's eyes to look up the hard thing is they're like as a viewer i'm not really sure what they're looking at mm. and if maybe everyone was looking up then then like you don't actually know what it is and it would actually tell a story but like the fact that it's it, i feel like it's empty like there's still something that's missing from the story here um and for me i think it's good to have context here but mm. Um, like they're in a crowded possibly tourist space but these three figures it's nice there's spacing between them but and then there's kind of this build up to these figures but for me they don't really add anything they're just kind of like talking and it's a little bit hard to see any context or what they're doing um, they it's just like even if you shot just these two mm. really close yeah um, either even like got up in front of them just to see their face and like as I'm looking up um, or right directly behind them mm. and see what it kind of like see it what it is that they're looking up at mm. great critique Cindy all right Vincent I like this diagonal here and there's a nice depth here 
And at first, I actually thought these were three women in dresses, but not. <laughs> and this is a tricky thing because it kind of looks like the man's looking up this way. And you kind of want to build more of a connection between this man here and this woman here. So what you could have even done is take the camera, hold it up from a higher angle and shoot down and tilt the camera. So you frame it to show only this woman and this man here. So you could kind of force this relationship between them. Because it is interesting is that his is the inside and she's on the outside. So when you're shooting these kind of scenes, just know that it's really hard with these distractions. So just getting a little closer, putting your camera up a little higher and tilting the camera mm -hmm. would have made this uh, stronger. All right, and IKH? Oh, in Belgium. Oh, wow, I love Oh, I want to go there. I know, I want to go here. Um, just beautiful capture, beautiful decisive moment with the perfectly hopped off <laughs> boy who's about to jump off. So there's a little bit of space here. And this perfect gesture and space between the two figures. So it's just, it's a beautiful photo. Um, at first I was like, maybe like to reframe it so that like they're a little bit more central, but I kind of like the action maybe if, i wish there was a little bit more something on the left side here of yeah on the left side either so i guess if we do i like, like this idea of like a non-traditional like not including the entire head but here it just feels like not as intentional mm. um but just the silhouettes are beautiful and the great thing is you know sunsets do reoccur so you can <laughs> still take more silhouettes and like work work it looks this, like an amazing beach this beach Man, even looking at the sunset just puts me in a good mood. Mm. Alright, a mezzo. So, I think this is just a little bit too far away. I do like, you know, the the rain, obviously, the, the reflection here. But just a little bit too far away, a little bit too much dead space here. So, just next time I'll just get closer, perhaps crouch, put the man in between the buildings where the leading line is. Um, or even stepping around here to the left of him, shoot the man with the mirror, uh, the umbrella up, and just get the building in the background. So just get a little bit closer, crouch down lower, and work the scene from some different angles. All right, from, from Luis, I love the shot. Wow. Yeah. Oh wow, it's just first of all, just the colors are so beautiful at this moment. Um, the figures having like clear. I guess, yeah, pretty clear space between the figures, except a little bit layering here, but kind of like, I think the gesture kind of like make, brings a lot of curiosity and this, this view or this um, gesture looking downwards kind of makes you want to look here too. But for me, like this singular boy and then the four perfectly positioned women <laughs> here with like yeah. these colorful towels, yeah. the reflection here, I think this is a beautiful image even the waves here kind of like naturally lining up to where the women are yeah and just this the the tones of this deep blue with the the reds and the oranges popping and boom 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 cherry on top here that's an it's amazing a, it's the four women i think that have yeah. this nice balance because even though we don't have any everyone's backs are faced to us i just feel like it's it's just a beautiful photo because of these like perfectly placed yeah form. it's so good nice one Luis oh that's a, that was the feedback yeah. alright so Jeff this shot is actually really good it's it's a very ambitious shot you got this woman's hands here pointing here kid jumping up decides the moment high five kid with a dog feet person Prius photographer walking in so mm -hmm. there's so much good movement action scene um I mean, my only critique would be just aesthetically, it just it's just really hard because you're shooting in, uh, you know, the shadow and the light. So it looks like kind of like a lot of like muddy tones inside the post processing. But in terms of the composition, it's it's pretty freaking awesome. It's it's a very the jump the jump yeah. That's, that's really it should be like a Nike ad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a in terms of composition, it looks fantastic. All right, Cindy, critique on this shot, Marco. Okay. Well, my Emma, first, I thought this was like two, two images. Two yeah, images. That's cool. Just because this line is so perfect. Mm. For me, I think it, it. So it's good. I think it's good that an image like makes you want to look more. Because like, wait, what am I looking at? Yeah. Um. So that's good and it's inviting, and then it making me take, taking me to look at this 
shadow gesture right here. Mm. Um, let's see. I think though I'm my eyes are kind of taken all over the place. Mm. I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. Maybe like this is a central figure or mm. even the shadow. Um, I I actually like this bookend of like and then yeah. like the little crook in his arm. Mm -hmm. um, kind of adds dynamism. A lot of empty space here in the blue sky and this red woman kind of like doesn't really add much for me mm. definitely like i like it's a nice street scene but i think either if you maybe you saw it and you saw the shadows and maybe like you would just work with this figure in the shadows mm. and then somehow step more towards your right and move your body this way so that you can just still frame with the, his elbow or his arm mm. get the shadow and then just get mainly this person mm. yeah no i think what doesn't work for me so well in this shot is there's just too much dead space in the center of the frame i actually do really like how it looks like a vertical shot married with another shot this nice mustard the red here the blue skies takes your eyes around the frame and you know cherry on top looks like the guy is grabbing this guy's arm here and this lady here but i think once again, this is the hard thing with layers, is that you just need something to happen that really grips you. I mean, that's strong, but because there's so much dead space in the center of the frame, I think it's a little bit hard to see what's going on. So Cindy's suggestion of just working the scene a little bit from the right would be a good one. All right. Um, shot from Lisa. Did Lisa submit too? Uh, no. No. So. No, okay, never mind. That one's Vicky. Oh, that one's Vicky. Yeah. Sorry, I get, I get women names mixed up. <laughs> Alright, um, okay. oh, so my turn. Very colorful, love the leading lines here. This woman just perfectly framed around here. Yeah, just, it's nice little stories you see people in the, the mirrors, people's heads sticking out. It, my critique would be, it's good, but not interesting enough. Like, mm -hmm. you see people selling stuff and that's nice and you know, she's framed quite nicely. They're doing some stuff, but you're not 100% sure what they're doing. So here, uh, I mean, this is once again, the hard thing is that I don't think anybody could have really shot a better scene in this photograph. Maybe even just getting closer and just framing more of them here or just focusing on them. So maybe focusing more on the scene on the left side or the right side. Otherwise, just showing too much is a little bit, I think, too much to, to look at. Lotto? <laughs> last shot. Let's Ooh, buddy Getty. Jesus. This is the, the Getty. Yeah. It's like, wow, this uh, is... makes me miss the Getty, yeah. <laughs> it makes me miss LA. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay, so you have Jesus here framed in this, like, modernist <laughs> geometric <laughs> building concrete, and you have this person um, with... as an ad for Apple yeah. <laughs> right here. So I kind of love this, like, whimsical storytelling. Ooh, actually, if you had gone a little bit more of this camera here, it could have been interesting, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because, like, obviously you have this, like, Jesus-like figure. Jesus is watching. <laughs> um, here in, like, in his, like, mighty glory standing above other people, um, the shapes work really well, and I think there's this nice, um, kind of, like, comparison, contrast. Uh... I wouldn't say this is like a necessarily like a deeply like layered or layered photo, but I do still like the composition because I can see mm. these as like um, adding a lot. The yeah. geometric, uh, the architecture actually adding a lot to the shapes or to the image, bringing shape to mm. like this character. Um, it seemed like he was actually standing still for a while, so maybe working the scene and getting slightly mm. more interesting people yeah. walking by. Mm. Um, Maybe some more deep, a deeper interaction. Maybe like maybe this person looking up. Yeah. Or maybe a hand gesture. That would that would be like the cherry on top. Or maybe even crouching down super super low, shooting up because the top of the frame, everything here, there's so many good elements. But there's mm. too much negative space good here. Point. So if you just got closer and crouched down, then this man's head would appear up here in the uh. frame, or you know. Yeah, I think that would probably be the best, but it is a very fun, whimsical shot. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Wow, so... Hmm. Oh, yeah, they kept working on it. Man. Oh, I kind of like this one, too. Man, he's got some, like, beautiful hair. <laughs> and cloak. Yeah, this is a strong okay. shot, too. 
I don't know what that thing is on the top, but I think this shot is really strong as well, and you can see more of the... But I think, yeah, like, this shot is certainly much more ambitious in terms of the, the storytelling. Yeah, and the, the look, this look outwards, and you know, has this more, like, mighty appearance. Man, so That's... good job, guys. Right. Yeah, high five. Wow. I okay. think... All right, so... Cindy, why don't you announce your first... Oh, so two prizes, as we had said, to conclude Street Notes, and just to say congratulations and great job for everyone submitting these past weeks. Um, so the first prize is a haptic press box, which is a limited edition box of all three of our paper books that we produced. And Street Notes, it's been almost a year now that we made Street Notes, and then we made Photo Journal, and then we made Film Notes, and then Part of this um, gift set, you also get a free uh, Street Notes mobile edition, so you can always keep Street Notes and these assignments in your pocket via your phone. Um, so Haptic Press Box is actually available in our Haptic store right now, actually click here, um, for only another week. So if you do actually want to pick one up, it's still available here. So that's prize number one. And then prize number two is for going to be for best photo. So the other one's for best critique and this is for best photo. This is Vitruvian camera. Wait, where's Anna? Anna. She's outside. She's somewhere. Anyways, yeah. um, so this is designed by the very talented Annette Kim, um, who is just a beautiful artist, illustrator, designer, very, this is her here, and also Eric's sister. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Anna actually studied and analyzed um, a bunch of different camera designs and was inspired by the Vitruvian camera to design this original, like she sketched and drew out and conceptualized the entire draw. It was so, it's yeah, so she cool. drew out every little stroke and part of this image, conceptualized this camera to honor the idea of this Vitruvian man and this Vitruvian perfect proportioned um, camera. Cool thing is too is that a ideal camera doesn't exist, but it could exist via a Vitruvian camera. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so it's cool, step just the step. step by step making of. So oh, that's cool. Beautiful. So those are our two prizes, um, and it was really hard for us to like decide who to pick. Um, but we thought a lot about it. We also discussed it with uh, Jennifer and Annette, too, our haptic team. Um, and so I'll award the, the first prize. So this is for best critique. And I mean, I come from education, so I don't know how to star best critique. But I must, have, but I must give credit to somebody who's been a very constant source of or constantly been um providing really constructive critique, but also innovating in their critique. So to award, um, where is it? Drum oh, roll. here. Drum roll. Okay, here. Steve. Yeah, Jordan congratulations, For Steve. best critique. So um, the reason why we chose this is that, I mean, first of all, we love that you drew the composition lines here, and it just assists in understanding the photo. But besides that, like, we've seen you provided constant supportive and encouraging but constructive feedback throughout um the many weeks so congratulations steve jordans oh so people that win how do they contact us your uh your haptic email okay my haptic email so um steve jordans email me at cindy at erickimphotography.com it's cindy c-i-n-d-y at erickimphotography.com um, so that I can get your address and ship it up to you. Cool. And then for best All right. photo. So best photo. So. This was hard. This was really hard because there's so many great entries throughout all the weeks and we wanted to actually to choose the best image from uh, the last week's assignment, Depth and Layers, because it is the most difficult and the most challenging assignment. Even myself, trust me, I'm not the best street photographer when it comes to depth and layers. I've studied a lot. I, you know, I think I made some decent depth layer shots, but certainly something I'm still working on. So when Cindy and I first looked at this photo by Luis 
we were both just blown away. It's immediately you could see the strong color theory, the the blues versus the orange skin, golden hour, and just the spacing between all these subjects and these four ladies out here and the reflection here. And then once I saw the reflection here, I'm like cherry on top. All right, that's the shot. And it was it was really hard once again because not only has everyone left amazing critiques this week and also all the the weeks and also build up the the forum. Just helping each other because I mean freaking Patarbi's hard and no one's giving each other real feedback from Creek. They're just like on Facebook and Instagram, like, yeah, I like it, cool. So the nice thing about you guys critiquing is as you critique and give constructive feedback to your fellow peers, it actually helps you be a better photographer mm -hmm. and analyze your own work. And even through these assignments, I really am appreciative of Cindy because often I lose inspiration and motivation to shoot and having assignments and um, a supportive community is a good way to keep me motivated. So yeah, good job, Luis. Congratulations. All right. Do, so Luis, contact me at cindy at ericanphotography.com for us to send you your Vitruvian artwear shirt. Cool. So what's going to be the future for the forum and street <laughs> club and, you know, just concluding thoughts, Cindy? Yeah, I mean, it's... I'm so, it's a bit bittersweet that like, oh. I mean, when a summer ends, it's like, oh, summer's ending, but I want to do all these projects and I didn't have enough time. Yeah. But at the same time, um, I am so impressed by just, <laughs> I like that you leave it on this week. Yeah. Um, this, um, uh, Ryan's photo. Ryan's shot's a good shot. Um, I, I mean, we had no idea that the street club and the forum was going to grow up to be this big and actually have such constructive, great feedback. I love. Um, especially the people providing Alita showing like different alternative photos of which like from the masters that like that um, we're minded uh, or that the photos look similar to or going to read cropping images to give suggestions so just because street clubs not officially continuing in a sense that um, I won't be posting assignments and we won't be doing these video reviews who knows maybe in the future we'll get back to it um, but that doesn't mean you can't stop you can't stop. You cannot stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Um, that you could still post and post on the forum, post your photos for critique. Um, I would love, I mean, this is a call for anyone who found some use or felt like they really benefited and loved Street Club to volunteer themselves to help out by providing assignments and doing basically what I was kind of doing, choosing a random assignment. You can choose it from the many lists of Eric's photos assignments that he's created on his very resourceful resource for street photographers. Um, or you can come up with your own assignments and then we can kind of still do the same weekly challenges in this way. Um, but I mean, right now, haptic for us is like Cindy and Eric are really kind of knee deep in a lot of different projects. Um, and exciting is that we are actually based right now in Kyoto. And um, as you might've seen from a few of our videos is that we've been based here with um, Annette and Jennifer as we work on um, different artistic projects. You can actually see, uh, here's some of Eric's dispatch. Eating a lot. <laughs> Wait, was that just today? Yeah, oh, that was so good. Was I did it earlier. Yeah, so it just, Oh, enjoying the beautiful um, scenery, inspiration, <laughs> um, learning about Kyoto aesthetics, as well as just embracing the moment. And I mean, we work, I mean, the time that Jennifer and Annette were here, there were a few days we worked at least like 14 hours straight. Yeah. Working on, I'll give a little preview of what we were working on, I think. Um, so, oops. Uh, so I just did a sneak on my the Instagram. Um, a few of our upcoming projects that will be released in the next few weeks. There's Master's Book, which is the distilled lessons of the Masters of Street Photography, uh, distilled by Eric Kim, and then I made the design and layout, um, printed in limited edition. Uh, here's a sneak of a beautiful cappuccino <laughs> um, with the Saigon Satchel, as well as the Eric Kim neck strap, all handmade. Um, but this is what our pride and beauty that we were working on while we were here, yeah. dedicating 
all of our hours, Jennifer doing layout, Anna doing all of the illustrations from the original cover design, drawing, hand drawing, hand and drawn, coloring, all the details, each little stroke until it was up to perfection of this book that um, we all wrote together called Eternal Return to Create It Every Day. Something that Eric's been writing about for a while and I feel like I've been thinking and dreaming about for a while. If I had a book like this to just tell me that I it's not that I can be creative, but I am creative. Mm. And that by being creative is just a natural part of being human. Creating, exploring, asking, learning is all part of kind of this artistic creative process. And so there's different tools, assignments. It's really fun, innovative, bringing together concrete assignments from photography, drawing, and writing to kind of encourage you to flourish as a as an artist, as a human, right? So that's really excited for this project. We're still working with a printer right now. Um, oh, here are more shots of <laughs> Saigon Satchel. Oh, we, oh, exciting is that. Um, so Anna actually designed this shirt. She drew, hand, hand drew, drew everything. The skull and the... Um, and as you know, if you followed Eric, he talks a lot about Memento Mori. What is Memento Mori? Memento Mori is remember that you die, you will die and that you must die and therefore, shoot every single day like it's your last because you never know when you're going to get into a texting while driving accident. Yeah, so it was really sweet. So Anna kind of just drew this based on, like, oh, Eric talks about this concept a lot. So she drew and can't conceptualize this design, and we just um, released it for a limited time in our haptic shop. So support her. Um, all of the proceeds of this shirt actually go straight to the artist. So... By supporting, by purchasing this shirt, all the proceeds actually support directly the artist. I don't know any other place that does something like no. this. But we love just empowering other artists to create good stuff. And we believe in, especially like the message of this shirt, to inspire yourself, inspire other people to seize the day and embrace the moment. So there's just a few projects, but as so you can tell, we've been working on a lot of different things, lots of energy, working with Sean Lottman, who will be coming to Haptic soon. Lots of exciting excitement here <laughs> very stressed out with coffee uh where are you for but the forum will continue on and we'll um like i said make it your own um you know this way i said this is going to be a platform where we're on the same team empowering each other and learning together um i love the different um posts that <laughs> like time to buy fairy um, different types of questions about flash, about equipment, about feedback, about these philosophical questions. I don't know if other photographers have a space. No, right? Like, yeah. where, where can you ask these questions? So, just, I love that that's, the forum has taken off in that way. Um, and also, if you have any suggestions or ideas, just feel free and start with Red. There's no, you don't need permission from us. <laughs> this is yours. Make it yours. All right, we love you guys. See you soon.